All right. Hey, everyone. We did this yesterday, but the recording was <laughs> My computer uh, took, a, took a giant poop, and so we're back again today. Swimming from Home Talk Show, I'm here with Tom Shields. Um, so, Tom, you just got back from the OTC uh, mm-hmm. yesterday. Um, yes. Can you tell me about how, how your experience was while you were there and then kind of the experience mm-hmm. of, of going away from there? <laughs> um, I figured out the word out. So yesterday, in the mi- middle of the interview, I like, pooped out and I couldn't remember a word for like 30 seconds. It was purgatory. Mm-hmm. And that's usually how I describe OTC, but it was like, kind of like a nicer one this time because uh, like every time you're there, life kind of continues, but you're just kind of like there. You're eating the same mm-hmm. food. It's kind of Groundhog Day, especially for us. We just kind of double single, double single, double single. Um, so you're just kind of moving through that. So that's kind of how it was. Um, I just washed my hands. I'm safe in my house. Sorry, but I did touch my face. Um, so, you know, the go bear thing happens. And then I think that day or the day before that, they were like, Hey, no new people on campus, but you guys can keep going as normal. And then it was like, okay, now schedules are going to change. Now we're going to do this. Now no more people in the cafeteria now. And so just like each day it escalated and they were kind of like, Hey, by the end of next week, being this week um that we know we're gonna kick people out but um then uh, then it was like okay now it's gonna be wednesday okay now you can stay like until the middle of april now this now that and so it just kept changing and then the governor i guess reached out and shut it down um mm. i don't know uh, that's just what we heard um and so then we hopped on a plane and came home and now we're just kind of like day-to-day maintenance and home kind of stuff yeah um but that's not the focus right now and i mean durden's probably the you know single best leader i've ever worked with and then whenever something like this goes on that's what you want to rely on is their leadership and it's like you know we got to keep you guys healthy like that's obviously the number one priority and then we gotta um you know do what's best for society and all that so we're just doing that kind of stuff yeah um yeah and so you're back in the bay area now which you know has gotten um a little more coverage than maybe some other areas even you know because you guys yeah yeah, tell me about that so I'm from Orange County and like they don't have okay. a quote unquote shelter in place. But like I look through mm-hmm. their orders for my home area and, or where I'm from. And it, it's like the same thing here. It's like everything's closed. You can go outside. You can exercise. Um, that's it. No more, you know, six feet apart at all times. No more than whatever, 10, 25. I forget the number. I'm not doing that. So it doesn't matter. Um, people in the same place at one time. And uh, only essential businesses are open. Um, we're lucky out here. We Our compliance is pretty good. So um, Trader Joe's, has. I went there last night. It was like no more than three of any individual item. So you get like, okay. like everything was pretty much there um, that I normally buy. So I, I feel very fortunate. I know that's not the case yeah. around the country. So um, yeah, so I mean, we're shelter in place here, and I, I think, yeah, I mean, everyone kind of knows what that is. I don't want to misinform. And like I said yesterday, if you're coming to this interview for um, technical information, then uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't advise doing that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, what have you been cooking the last few days? Um, have you uh, made anything special? Regular, yeah, I mean, I work with uh, Mike Goddard of. Uh, I think he works with Renaissance Periodization still um they give me my diet so i had um you know fat-free milk and pretty good cereal for me low sugar uh my regular tortillas egg white burritos with the little hash browns in them usually comes out to like seven grams of fat 30 grams of protein 100 grams of carbs um and then yeah i just kind of like follow that and so that's what i eat normally when i'm home so yeah it's nice. not that different yet um you know we're kind of handle it as it comes obviously i just got lucky like last night it was relatively stocked up yeah, yeah. um so I, I'll, I'll just say this once you know we're you know we know we've had this interview yesterday i'm gonna say so we talked about this yesterday but i'm gonna yeah, stop of saying course. that yeah, but yeah. um so you made a post on instagram about mm. kind of you know this is bigger than just that it's, it's bigger than mm. just swimmers it's bigger than just athletes um, mm. kind of coming together as a society. Could you talk yeah. about that and kind of your stance? Absolutely, absolutely. Like, I get, like, why people care. It, trust me, like, I care. I've been in this in this system, in this, or you know, I guess occupation, if you will, for 20 years now, um, 10 years at a high level. And, you know, it's, you know, and um, my family, like, my dad flies for United. Um, outside of him, every single other person I'm directly related to uh, in my marriage as well, so with my in-laws, um, 
are in food service, education, or um, healthcare. So it's like, they all love me and care about me. And so they're all like asking what's going on, you know, what's going to happen. And it's like, I don't know, you saw what the IOC guy said, but like, why does that, like, like what everyone else is doing is so much more important right now. And, um, you know, we're in the entertainment business. And I said this yesterday, so it's probably why it's not coming off the right way. Um, and we get like, you know, eight days every four years and that's all that it is. And so like, that's easily lost and it's easily, um, let go of. And so it's not that big a deal. And so like, as, as personally, you know, as big as it may feel personally, and, uh, even if you're not looking at the Olympics, we're going through a recruiting process, which is what I was hitting on in my Instagram post, um, BVT shields, uh, follow me, um, was, uh, you know, like no one's going to hold that against you. Like. I think a lot of swimmers are worried about two things. Like, how do I take care of myself? How do I pay for rent? Which for a lot of people who are going to listen to this interview is scholarship or I'm um, getting into a good school. Right. And then the second thing is legacy. And like none of, you know, um, the legacy thing is all pretend. Like if you're, fo- you know, if you're, if I'm focusing on that at this age, then like, what am I doing? And then uh, the other thing is like, you have to trust that, you know, we're going to get through this together and no one's going to like judge you and hold that against you, whether it's a college or a company or a federation um, for not competing at a games this summer, if it's not held or not competing at a trial this summer, if yours was just canceled, which multiple were just canceled or postponed. Yeah. Um, I'm not as up on the news as the news site. So again, don't trust my misinformation, <laughs> but from what, from talking to my friends and stuff, that seems to be the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's for you being an athlete um, with, in that stance, which, you know, I, I agree with, um, what, what do you have advice for maybe athletes who are struggling, you know, it's like swimmers, this is your identity. This is their mm-hmm. life. It's like, what would you say to someone who's, who's struggling in this position of like, mm-hmm. well, I need, I need to keep training. I need to keep swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, my default this last year and a half, um, since I've been in therapy is, uh, like whenever you get stuck, like that's a thought pop, like pattern. That's you repeating something to yourself over and over again. Mm-hmm. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to make sure I just need to make sure that blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, well, hold on, slow down. Like that's, there's usually an emotional component behind that. Like that's fear, that's worry, that's anxiety. So it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you're scared and you're going to have to realize you're, you're afraid and it makes sense. And, and just, you have to be okay with that making sense. Like it's, it makes sense to be scared right now. And that's okay. And we're all going to be here and we need to do the next right thing. And like freaking out about something or using or letting that um, thought or line of thought, like dictate your actions and and make you lie or make you or put you in situations that are compromising at this point um, is unfair and not healthy. And like, I understand where that comes from um, because it's in my head too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like uh, my wife drove down to Santa Cruz before the shelter in place. And because I flew to Des Moines and then with the OTC and then home and been around a ton of other people were like, Hey, look, like we're kind of thinking at least for five, but maybe seven or maybe 14 days, like she can't come back up because of the shelter in place and the way it is. And it's like, yeah, like that's pretty self-selective. Like, I don't think we're going to get in trouble if she, if she drives back up, but like we want to do this the right way and we want to, like, we want to be good stewards of what we have um, and what we can control. And I think that like, if you're able to slow down and sit with your emotions and then like face this issue with a little bit more of like a rational or like send yourself in mindset, mm-hmm. um, that might be helpful. Um, for those of you who have done it, I do cognitive behavioral therapy. That's pretty much all I'm talking about right now. Mm-hmm. But um, it's really helpful for me. And like, you know, when you think of these like stimulus reaction, and then you're like, whoa, like this isn't who I am. Like, I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to like cheat my society or possibly infect and kill someone. It's like, okay, then I got to like slow down, realize what's going on and be like, oh, okay, I'm just afraid. And, you know, for a lot of you out there who are going to be listening to this interview, like, it's absolutely terrifying and it's scary and like you've worked for multiple years on getting into college especially if you're in that 15 16 17 range and if you're in that 12 13 14 range you're working on building into that next step and like unfortunately in our sport this ladder is so visible and like every rung and like well if i miss this rung you know something like you know i gotta go to jos or far westerns or whatever it was that's what for us it was jos Mm -hmm. and it's like yeah i gotta go to cif or state and then juniors and then nationals and then 
Okay, then you go, maybe I'll get my national cut. Maybe I'll get a swim of finals and nationals or trials. And then, then I'm in a good school. Maybe not, and I'm in a good school. That was me. I didn't get a, na- a night swim at nationals or trials. Um, I got into a good school anyways because I was good at short course. And, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's so apparent. Everyone's story is so dragged out their whole career, and everyone knows it the whole way. And it's like, well, well, well I'm going to miss this. And it's like, yeah, but everybody is. And so you have to trust that, like, collective good here. And, like, yeah, maybe some people are going to um, – get an edge or have a better situation but that's just the way it is right now like you would know this more than me so i guess i'm asking you but i think that like it's pretty well known that the dutch team's been out of the water for a minute is that true like the dutch national team from from what i i I believe so yeah and like so that's more like my world whereas like you guys the people who i'm talking to high school swimmers and college recruits like you're not really worried about the dutch national team's doing but like, you know, this is going to affect people unfairly. That's just the way it is. And you're going to have to, like, self-select to take this seriously. And there's things you can do at home. But, like, I'm remiss to tell you, like, oh, this is what you need to be doing. And then a bunch of people are just going to do that, like, 50 times to get hurt. Or, like, against, oh, well, Tom said I should do this. So I'm going to not listen to my coach. It's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm assuming that you may or may not still be paying dues. Hopefully you are because you want your club to be there when, you know, um, these restrictions get lifted. So like work with those people. And that's what I always say. Like I do, I've done some clinics. I don't do many. And everyone's like, well, what do you, what about this? What about that? And it's like, Hey, look, like I have my own thoughts and I, and I can like tell you what I think is like a good change in the next 30 seconds, but I can't guarantee that's a good change six months from now. So I really try to like instill a work within your system attitude because, and this is a whole, now we're like way in the weeds here, but the best ah. athletes I've ever seen, work well in their systems and that's true for Lockheed, that's true for Phelps that's true for my teammates Murphy and Adrian I believe I'm okay at it like the guys who can navigate every system and find success are the guys who are going to find success so like commit to your system don't be like well Tom said abs so I'm going to do abs or this person said <laughs> our you know reverse foot elevated squats so I'm going to do those it's like no it's like we don't know what you're doing around you know what I mean I don't know what you're you know, but the people who know you do and so work with them and that should be two hours a day at most. And other than that, like, keep your hands clean. Don't get sick. Like, that's the main problem, right? Like, focus. Right. right. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I think that's a really great point that, like, working within your system, you know, people who have learned how to work within their system are now having, are now finding themselves in a whole new system with that has a mm-hmm. much bigger network, right? Mm-hmm. Because we're all kind of working in the same system or trying mm-hmm. to of, yeah. of staying yeah, healthy yeah. and staying safe. Yeah, and I mean, ultimately, like, yeah, the, it's not difficult. Like, if we don't have the pool, try not to eat too much candy. Do some abs, do some jumping jacks. If you have a stationary bike, get on it. Yeah. Like, that's, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I, I don't want to, like, be insulting, but, like, you, like, I think if you're 14 and above and you've been working on this sport at least five years by now, um, you kind of know. You know what I mean? And it's just a matter of sitting down and do it. And, like, hey, do it with your parents. Do it with, you know, sibling work. FaceTime a coach like there's there's the really big solutions here and like I didn't know this existed because I don't work in the city my sister-in-law set up this whole you know that zoom app like yeah um it's yeah. way better than FaceTime like you can or um we're on Skype right now Skype because <laughs> um, you can do like a bunch of different like it's gonna be like a ton of different cameras at once yeah um that's what I'm doing because like I'm dead alone right now in my apartment so um just kind of doing that to help get my community and um all that important stuff too which I think is like now that I'm not at the OTC and back plugged into like the situation that a lot, a lot, a lot of other people find themselves. And I think that's going to be the difficult part. Whereas mm-hmm. like I, I can do crunches, I can do pushups, I can do pull-ups on my neighbor's balcony thing. And like, that's not that bad. Um, but like, I think the focus for me, um, because you know, I am coming off a depression cycle in my life, but the focus for many people who are teenagers, which is that basically one big cycle of depression, um is community so like i think that's the focus and if you're not focusing on that like that's a huge part of self-care that we're not going to get right now or that we're not going to get naturally because everything's canceled Mm -hmm. so like now that like i could like yes i'm kind of glad yesterday i got um a little fooey because now i can kind of like now i've lived in this system for 48 hours it's like okay wow i'm really lonely (laughs) that's gonna be way harder for me to deal with than how to stay in shape and not gain weight yeah yeah. So speaking speaking of cancellations, um, you know, obviously 
for us as swimmers mm-hmm. and as swim fans, NCAA's was a huge hit. Huge, yeah. Uh, you know, did you know? It's like you you were gonna witness it in some capacity. What were what what was kind of your reaction when you found out that that was? Oh, happening? I mean, I'm obviously super bummed. We kind of like the NBA <clears throat> going. I was we were sitting at dinner at OTC, and I'm a little fatalistic obviously uh, if you know me as a person so i'm just like okay well that's everything it's yeah. like if the nba like nba is the number one um you know the wwe and ufc are still doing the, like trying to do their things and great for them like i want to watch khabib tony too don't get me wrong but um like once the nba went it's like, okay well I mean, there's no way there's this week. there's no way there's march madness which is there's no way they're swimming and Mm-hmm. who knows you know what i mean we're still waiting on uh official word or like knowledge about what's going to happen with um the games and stuff which is a little bit more like culturally important so i get why we're hanging on to that but we'll see right but back to nc2a it's like yeah we were all very sad and um and i don't mean to say that like oh just because like i'm publicly like saying like hey like this is an important like we need to focus on what's important right now that i'm not also devastated like i'm devastated on behalf of my teammates and the guys i train with every day i'm devastated for um the seniors um you know who may or may not get their eligibility back i don't know i haven't been looking into that at all i'm just kind of like doing the next right thing right now but mm-hmm. um you know wingers uh, ethan carl like our seniors and um seniors across the country obviously multiple sports and it's like and the other thing that like emotionally that we were that i was thinking about is like man these guys had a lot of these guys had their last practice and like or last meet weeks ago and didn't even get to like have that emotional experience whereas like i've been yeah. you know i'm still swimming but i've been through a lot of lasts like i've been through my last state meet at high school i've been through my last jails i've been through my last ncaa's and it's like it's an emotional experience it's, it's an ending of, of an era and you get to go through it with teammates and then these guys don't really get to do that like their last thing was like conference or or what have you and they didn't, it's not the same emotional um, catharsis, if you will. So, mm-hmm. like, that's a, that's a loss for sure. And I, I would definitely, like, don't want to overlook that. But at the same time, like, I just didn't see that many voices in that time period publicly saying, like, hey, like, this is important. And, um, you know, I watch uh, YouTube a lot, try to pretend to be a young kid. And uh, I like Ozzy Man reviews. And he had a good take on this. He, he said, in quote, or I'm quoting him. He's like, you know, I'm a comedian. I like jokes, but like, why are we joking about this so much? And why aren't we taking this seriously? Like, <clears throat> you know, he's about the similar age as me. So back into quoting him, he was like, you know, we've seen tsunamis and we've seen huge terrorist attacks. This has killed almost twice as many people as those combined already. Um, so it's like, it just kind of feels weird. And it's not acute. Obviously, it's chronic. Mm. But I definitely agree with that take where it's like, what's going on here? It's like, this seems to be a bigger deal. And um, we don't really know that much. And it's like, oh, well, it's only old people. It's like, yeah, well, I know a lot of old people, too. <laughs> like, there's still, yeah. you know. And, and then in France, apparently, like, and this is, uh, so I knew, I, I am not a good news source. But in Ozzy Man Review's video, he said a bunch of people under 50 died in France. So yeah. there you go. You know what I mean? So it's just like, we don't know. Right. And so it's like, this is way more serious than, you know, and, and then we may think it is and like and what if it's not i'm, I'm gonna look like an idiot but like i don't know i would favor on the side of caution at this point um i'm a liberal arts major every <laughs> every science major i've talked to i have a friend who's a med student it's like no no, no like this is like big deal and it's like okay yeah. well you know what i mean it's like i hope that they trust me when i say hey i might know a little bit more about the book of genesis than you <laughs> when i trust them that they might know a little bit right. more about this than they do and so it's just it, you got to take their word for it yeah Definitely. Um, did you have a, a particular race you were looking forward to at NCAA's? Yeah, two fly. I think uh, I resonate with Wangers a lot. He's been hunting that one down um, for a while, uh, mm-hmm. and it t- like I couldn't win it until my senior year either. And to be honest with you, and I don't want to offend anyone that he was up against racing, I don't pay attention that much to other teams um, and like who's in ascendancy to win that race um, any longer. So. I'm sorry if I thought Wangers was going to win and you think you were going to win, but um, I really thought Wangers had it in him. He's been training super well. He was training super hard this year, really consistent, really mature. And um, I just would have liked to have seen that be rewarded and, and celebrate that with him. You know, he's a great dude. Um, oh, I'm talking about uh, um, Zheng Wenkua, 
the Singaporean on our team. We call him Wingers. I apologize, but uh, he's a great guy. I couldn't say enough about him. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Any any closing thoughts? Um, no, I think that pretty much sums it up. Thanks for having me on. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Um, yeah. Cheers. Cool. Thanks a lot, Tom. Yeah. yeah.